hey, 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 hey. I want my Mary J. My Mary J. Vlogs today, y'all. What's going on? It is another Friday. We made it. We are here. It is Friday. I'm trying to get on here and see if if I'm live um, on this Facebook thing. Because when I first get on, you know, it always is private. So I'm trying to make sure that I can see it. I don't see it yet nowhere. So I can make sure that I'll be able to share this this week. But I just want to say hello to everyone. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. We made it to another Friday and I'm so excited. So excited. See, there it go right there. Getting ready to share it with the world. And we are public and we are live and we are ready. So let's go. Today's lineup, y'all. Oh my gosh. My brothers are in the building. My brothers are in the building. Like, we about to go all the way back. So a lot of people don't know a lot of my backstory. People just be like, who the heck is she? Where does she come from? Blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, this is another piece of a half of my life in regards to being signed to this label. Um, and I, my brothers, they were also signed as well. And um, we going we we just gonna go back. We gonna go go back and bring it all the way forward. And uh, we are gonna have a good time. Um, but first and foremost, I want to say happy birthday to all the Gemini's. If it's your birthday party, like it's your birthday. Hey, do your thing. All my anniversaries, lovers in the house. It's your anniversary. Make sure y'all make no more babies, but not. Nah, if you got to make some babies, make some babies because they're beautiful and I love them. But do your thing. Just keep loving. It's all about black love. Uh, for the graduates, again, happy, 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 happy congratulations to you uh, for going through so much, especially right now. It was like a triple situation going on with you guys. So kudos to all the graduates. Kudos to all the graduates. Kudos to all the graduates, including my daughter, Cherish, that uh, graduated uh, this year through all the craziness that was going on. She did it. And tomorrow we are going to be partying for her um, at her graduation party. So I look forward to that and letting her have a smile on her face. Um, of course, y'all know I'm always about mental health, I'm all about wealth. And um, so, of course, I don't have nobody here today to talk about mental health because I have a nice special presentation that I want to share with you guys in regards to um, the mental and uh, how it's effective uh, and it can also affect the families and um, just how the struggle is and, and what it looks like and how a smile could really not be a smile that somebody's just fighting through um, but going through. So um, I'm going to share this. This, uh, video with you guys. Close to 800,000 people die due to suicide every year, which is one person every 40 seconds. Suicide is a global phenomenon and occurs throughout the lifespan. There are indications that for every adult who died by suicide, there may have been more than 20 others making the attempt. This is Cherish Love, a beautiful 18-year-old, class 2021 high school graduate. Smart, sweet, but she has had some struggles. Cherish has attempted suicide more than once because she didn't think people would care if she was gone. And although she was surrounded by people who loved her, the tunnel vision almost took her away. This is her story. I wanted to commit suicide because of family issues over time, like what they would do and say to me, and it built up to where I was just done. And I just wanted to just not be here anymore because I felt like they wouldn't care if I was gone so what's the point so I just wanted to do it really badly
my nephew, my niece, mainly. I mean, all my family members, like, I care about them. And, like, I wanted to stay and not hurt them anymore. Like, because we've dealt with a lot of deaths in our family. So I didn't want to get that, put that burden on anybody. And, but mainly it was my niece and nephew. I wanted to watch them grow up, become who they are. Yes, it would have, because everybody should feel like they matter. And at that time, I felt like I didn't. <laughs> Everyone matters. When I learned my daughter first tried to commit suicide, um, I actually was there. I took her cell phone away from her. And she ran and tried to get, my husband was in law enforcement at that time. She ran and tried to get his gun. And um, that was definitely something that was an alert for us um, in regards to her trying to do that because it was a cell phone. And so, we knew it was definitely something more to it, um, as far as the signs even. When someone is having those type of thoughts to take their lives over something like that, we know that that pressure is, has to be, you know, higher than the average. Um, from her actually hurting herself, um, I was not there. She was in school sitting at a lunch table and some kids were making fun of her because she fell out off the table, um, off the chair. And um, everybody was, you know, screaming like, you know, oh, earthquake and all this other stuff. And she took one of the knives at the lunch table and started, you know, digging at her skin and started to bleed. These scars remind Cherish of those dark days and the pain she hoped to relieve by self-cutting. So the teacher asked her, why did she want, why did she do that? She said she wanted them to feel the way she felt. So from then, that's when I knew, uh, that we had, you know, something more deeper. And so Cherish helped herself get healing, or oh, the process, I would say, to healing herself. I'm Cherish Love and I matter. Talk to somebody. If you are in a crisis, call the toll-free National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This service is available to anyone who calls. All calls are confidential. Yeah, 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 man. So, yeah, that's that's my daughter's story. Um, that's part of her story, and um, a book is coming soon. Um, she is in transition. She just graduated, and um, she's working on being a phlebotomist. We're gonna get her her um, license for that. Uh, so, if anybody want to cash app that dear child, the dear child. It, want to cash app or her cash app? Um, I will put it in the chat. I believe it's cherry on top, but the E is a, a three uh, with two P's. Uh, so if you uh, you guys want to, you know, help the sister out because she's um, just wanting to be great. And um, I support just that. Um, but yeah, her book is coming. And if anybody, you know, is dealing with any of those things, um, don't ignore it. 
please do not ignore it at all. Um, special shout out to Simone Walker for doing that. Thank you so much, my sister. Um, she is phenomenal and doing a lot for the community when it comes to uh, addressing mental health and all the other great things she does with her production. So, um, you know, that's our segment for the mental health. On another note, let me switch around a little bit and give y'all a little words uh, from my brother, Sha Stimuli. <laughs> y'all check when him out. I said time was worth more than money. Some people listen like I said something explicit and truly they didn't get it. And some dude asked, if you did a show and when you got finished, instead of paying you dollars, they try to pay you in minutes. Would you take it? I would take it if it means more years, more days with my fam, more joy, more tears, more moments. Doesn't mean I won't have monetary gain. It just means that I'm so grateful for breathing. I can't complain. Then this other dude said, yo, you always dropping lessons. Like you ain't used to worship. You don't brag about possessions, homie. My kids are hungry. Sometimes they eat seconds. Real food, yo. They can't chew minutes or eat seconds, man. I said, I agree with him, but see, I think the concept of not praising dollars got taken out of context. See, when you have a salary, the work is required. When it's your passion, all the work is inspired. So if it's long check, small check, no check, you still give your all and you don't worry about the struggle you put in or if you fall. And you might not know if what you're doing is your calling, but if you would probably do it for free, you made the call. <laughs> yes, indeed. That is my brother, Sha Stimuli. I'm going to bring him on. I'm going to bring my brother, Deb. Um, De Listen, Deb need to be here. Deb is like, where did Deb come from? Oh, my God. <laughs> Deb. Kishana and Dre Knight, y'all. Give it up. I want. To, I can't do them individually. I got to do it collectively. So we're going to bring them all on. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, look at the team. <laughs> Yo. Yes, sir. <laughs> what is Yo. up, y'all? What is the deal? Yo, how, how about Shaw with the bar talk? That was that was passion. Yeah, how a, a mighty long way. Guys, fucking great, bro. I, I, I appreciate. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, man, <laughs> yes. I, we can't skip over the, the mental health video. Um, right. Shout out to Cherish, man. That's 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 a serious journey. Um, wait, was Cherish the baby that you would bring into the no, studio? No, it was Treasure. Treasure, right, tre right, It was okay. Treasure the baby. It was Treasure yeah. that was the baby I would bring up. Yeah, that's what I was telling one time we, when we was on the way to New York and we was passing Delaware, I was like, yeah, we used to come, when you was a little baby, I would take you up <laughs> and you would be around. And now she get to see these guys. <laughs> and she would just sit in her little, her little um, uh, seat and, you know, it was just wow, just to see her now. She's in New York um, and she was under them and, and doing her thing. Um, so yeah, nice. man, it's wild. It's it crazy. Was, it was but I want to go ahead, for Keith. sharing her story because I, yeah. I had no idea, honestly. You know, so many people suffer in silence. And, you know, I think this is when we need to be vocal about it. Hey, I know there's certain people that don't want to admit it just because of, I guess, a certain stigma that it brings. But I think in recent times, I think it's less of a stigma than it used to be. So, you know, kudos on you on, uh, you know, spreading the word and, you know, making people more aware. And, you know, if you are suffering in silence, then go get help or, you know, reach out. To yeah. Somebody. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's all. I mean, it's it's real. It's real, real. And, you know, the thing about it is we act like it don't exist or we want to just sugarcoat it or, you know what I'm saying? But it, it's it's real. We, we got to get to a point to where it's just like, it's normal. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because people think when it's, it's, it's something that's like, oh my God, this patient person is dealing with this. It's like, that's not normal. That's normal. Like, that's life. That's what we, you know what I'm saying? It's what we deal with. So we got to get to a point of just being normal with it and just being like, okay, what can I do to help? Or what can I do, you know what I'm saying, to just to be a support team. And so I'm, I, that's why I'm Absolutely. all about it because I deal with two kids that, you know, are, it's a struggle and people don't realize, you know, me trying to be mom. This is some of the stuff that I, I'm dealing with, trying to balance being 
what I really want to be, you know what I'm saying? And that's a struggle in itself, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, it's a pool and it's a give, you know? And so, but it's always good to jump. I jump in and I jump out, but people be like, you know, well, when is our album coming? I'm just like, if you all knew all the stuff that I got to go through, you know? Um, yeah, when I want to jump in, it just, just feels like it gets bigger and bigger. Every time I want to jump out, it, something else comes up that's really, really, you know, pulling, pulling. But um, I know all of you guys, um, you know, I want to talk a little bit about um, going back, you know, from you guys, you know, growing up together. I mean, we're looking at, you know, 30 plus years of relationships, you know, I'm in the 20 plus years bracket, you know what I'm saying? Y'all almost 40 <laughs> years in a friendship, you know? Um, and I want to, you know, just start off there, like bring us from little boys in BK chilling, you know, where did the music come into play? And, you know, that whole journey. Like, let's start off with you, Dub. Me, Drake, Dove, all went together, what, elementary school? Yeah, elementary mm -hmm. school. Um, Dre was the kid who taught everybody how to He was a <laughs> So, you know, can we turn? We use it, cuss. I mean, <laughs> be you, be you. They just got to accept it. They used to cuss if they don't. Dre used to come to school and he just used to be Rick Fry, and everybody was like, oh, he's craziness. You know, Dre was just that character. Me and Shaq was just on the cool and cool out. Dre was just the, the out of control. And then uh, after that, we linked up with Key during high school. Key and Shaq together. And then after and shot. Okay. 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 So, uh, shot. I mean, you know, you around these two guys that, or three guys that produce and make these beats, and you the ma you the mouthpiece. Like, how did that? Well, first of all, it was first of all, it was you and Andre. <laughs> Correct. That were the mouthpiece. <laughs> Dre right. was, was, was the. <laughs> I met I met Dre in you know in second grade, um, and we both we both were uh, vocal. We vocalists. <laughs> we we used to we used to sing on the bus every day, like on the on the Sunjet right. big yellow bus. Um, me and Dre used to go back and forth. Dre had like a lyric book. I had never even seen one of these things. So. We would know the words. He was a big Menudo fan. I had never heard of Menudo. <laughs> <laughs> and Trey, we just we used to sing Michael Jackson, Paul McCartney. Every sang everything, man. We just we we met doing music, and um, you know, he said I I, I helped him with some bully situation. I don't even remember. Yeah, well, but, well, what happened? What happened was we were we were seven years old. Thank you. And and Sha was the new kid in school, and when we got on the bus. We we both we both had a passion and love for music, and on our first day, I'll never forget it. The first day was the day I realized that this guy was better than me at everything that I liked to do. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, I knew the songs, but he knew every single lyric. Right? I mean, I couldn't even make out the lyrics, and this guy had it figured out. Right? So something went off in my mind and being like, I knew that I took pride in being really smart. And now I found somebody that I felt was even smarter than me. And so Shah became my pace car. And so our relationship for me anyway, really kicked off. Um, we was in the auditorium. And like Dub said, I was an out of control kid. I'm always talking. <clears throat> and so I'm probably doing this once again. And the teacher um, puts me I guess in the corner or to face the wall or something. And Sha stood up for me, man. He stood up and he tried to take the rap from me. You know what I'm saying? And still made, still made me go ahead and take my place on that wall. But I never forgot that at, as a seven year old, mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's we, we rocked I out, love man. It. We were, we were in the Wiz together, fourth grade. I was a scarecrow. He was a 10-man. Once again, another example that this guy 
is was better at everything. Dude, right? so you play music so, by ear. Listen, any listen, any song on. that came on the radio, he could play it on his keyboard. Look, at seven. Listen, like that's not and, normal. And, and and thank God he let me do that, and he didn't try to be a producer. <laughs> but I'll tell you a story. So so we're we're um we're in the fourth grade. We're nine years old, and we didn't learn anything other than a play after January. January, <laughs> That's June, true. right? We're rehearsing The Wiz, like a full two-hour production, complete with choreography, band rehearsals, scripts, and everything. And Shah and I were competing for the lead role, the Mike Jackson <laughs> character of the Scarecrow. And I remember this audition. And I remember going in, I was like, well, you know, he's better than me than pretty much everything, but I think I got a shot, right? And then I went ahead and I did my audition. And as soon as I heard Shaw sing, you can't win, I knew that it was over, right? Was, right? And, and so I settled into the role, the co-star, which would probably, which would, you know what I'm saying, be the, the beginning and the genesis of what our relationship would be in music, right? I became the Tin Man, which was the sidekick, the co-star, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I took a lot of pride in that because I, I found a role to play. And I think that with Sean and I both being competitive and pushing one another, that that play was great and it went off without a hitch. I mean, we memorized multiple songs, choreography, the entire script. And what it did for me was me listening to this every day was me actually studying Quincy Jones because this was a four album set and I have to memorize all these songs. And I and me and Sean, we memorized everybody else's lines too, by the way. We wasn't just memorizing our lines. We knew our lines, we knew your lines. We would like, we took pride in being the best. Right. You know? And and so that would carry on throughout our years and everything. And and till to this day, you know what I'm saying? Like Sean continues to inspire me. I hope that I inspire him. I try to push him. Of course. Of course. Yes, is, is it, does it, isn't there a tape laying around somewhere? Oh, yeah, this footage. I sent it to you. You got the way. This footage. I got to see it. It's digitized. I, 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 I always lose it, but Shaw but always finds No, you got you got the digital copy. We're we going we gonna to get it out there. Yo, and, we, and, and, yes. and, and then the funny thing is, during different parts of the performance, they pan the audience, and there you'll see Dub right <laughs> in the audience. He's there. He That's, That's real. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's what's up. That's what's up. I love it, man. So, okay, you guys are now. Um, getting older. You're in middle school. You're in high school now. Uh, when when was it like? You said, when did it? When did you guys, you know, come to that understanding or even interest to say, let's try to do this for real, for real, and make this a career? Or was that something that you know you guys wanted to do from the beginning? Well, I know for me, it, we we were separate. We had separated during after middle school. We had separated. I mean, they they did everything that they were supposed to. Sean Key went on to Brooklyn Tech, a great high school, and Dub went on to Morrow, you know, another great high school where I took my crazy ass to the zoo, right? So I was disconnected from them from a day to day standpoint, but I would always seem to pop up, right? And I would check in, say, with Dub, and whatever Dub was doing, wherever he was at, I would pop up, and then I was like in and out, right? And then Shaw, me, and Key, we had the basketball relationship that would always keep that going. I was pursuing a career as this rapper producer, right? And Shaw was so advanced that, you know, by the time we were 13, he was already recording with Master Ace and really getting getting a lot of experience as, as a kid. You know, he was Kid Dynamite, you know? And so- That I was. That, that, was, an, that was another, inspiring thing for me you know again using him as as my pace car you know if i knew i if, if, if i just use him as my pace car i knew i'd be okay because i'm i'd end up somewhere like where i just pass and get through if at the worst so that was for me okay okay i, I was rapping i was rapping in high school but i didn't i didn't really take it sir i was actually rapping with your boy uh deb that you mentioned earlier <laughs> dennis <Right. laughs> Yeah, we, we, were, we were, yeah, we were rapping, but, but uh -huh. me and Key, 
Yeah, yeah. Ilhan, shout out to Ilhan. I was going to find my shirt, too, to wear it. I, I think I got mine. <laughs> I was gonna be like, yo. He's he's in Georgia, by the way. He's out here. He's um, what? He's in Georgia. Okay. Yeah, he's, oh yeah, wow. He's out here. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but me and Key was was ball players at that time. You yeah. Know, I, yeah. I, I didn't even know Shaq Karan. You know what I'm saying? Like when we yeah. we played ball together, like he was the worst. And I was terrible. To destroy him, and then he terrible. just he just came up and. You know, and then we had a, a little crew in uh, Brooklyn Tech, but I think like the first time I heard him rap, we was in the park and like every like it was like a group of people that was like surrounding him, and uh, I never forget dude from um, Bush Babies Lee. He, Major. He, he spit a verse right, and then Sha said, "I right, I guess this is the time that I'm gonna show the world that I can rap," and just fucking destroyed it, and I was just like. Yo, what? <laughs> and then, you know, his brother's Lord Digger. So, like, sometimes you would be coming home from practice or school and you would see, like, famous rappers coming out of his house. Like, I remember one time, like, I went to the crib after school and Biggie left a message for his brother. I was like, what? So, anyway, like, I think my <laughs> freshman year at Howard, like, I always wanted to do it. I just never had the equipment or the outlet. So, my god brother's uh Buddha from um he did push your um put your your hands where my eyes can see for Buster. And then my nephew's father did, you know, a couple of joints for um Jay and like he was picking up steam as a producer. So like one day he just he showed me. Bruce. And you know, I found Bruce. somebody in the dorms that you know had some equipment, just kept practicing, kept practicing. And then I linked up with um this dude named Danny and his cousin was young guru. Shout out to Guru. So yes. That's that's yeah. where I learned how to make beats through Young Guru and Danny and you know and at that point Dre started coming around. He moved to DC and we started, you know, he started playing the piano. I was like, yo, how do you do those things with your fingers? Like my fingers are dumb. And I was just like, yo, if we could combine like what he does in the piano with, you know, saying what I got, that it, you know, I, I felt like that was gonna be a better product. Right. And then, you know, eventually dub started coming around. Yeah, I, I got your first tape too. Don't 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 gloss over that first attract sun entertainment oh, right, right. tape. Yeah, <laughs> entertainment. Like I want to hear that so bad, yo. Yo, you know, I think you mailed me that joint. I, I don't know if I was in Iowa or Delaware. I think I might have been in Delaware. Delaware. I was, yeah, because yeah, we listened we listened to it in the room, so it was it was a hazing session. They was like, "That's your man, your man, <laughs> your man." Yo, that that tape that tape made it to DC too when that came to my yes. show. Yes, attracted yep. entertainment. Yep, this was Shaw's main key. <laughs> <laughs> but you had the one joint that sounded like Glory, and everybody was like, "Yo, that I, remember, I remember." I <laughs> remember. I remember while 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 you guys were at Dell State, I came to visit, and I heard yep. Dubs and I heard Dubs beats, and that shit was so fire. It was so different. In the the drum patterns and the rhythm. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was like, yo, this shit is so it's so wrong. Cause I had just finished studying at conservatory yeah. and I'm listening to dub shit. And I'm like, yo, this is like all wrong and so right. You know, like, right. Like I just want to point Timberland, out Swiss beats on everybody track. else started out whack. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. right. Everybody else started out whack. Like yeah, I was man. whack rapper, ball player, all yeah. that. Key's first beat tape, you could tell it was like he yeah. needed progression. Yeah, I was a terrible rapper. Dub <laughs> sounded like <laughs> Dub sounded like he cheated the game. Like because yeah. he would talk about doing beats all the time all for the like time. two years of of yo. I'm gonna be better than everybody. Watch, yeah. I'm gonna be on the cover of the source. Watch, I'm gonna be better than similar. I feel like yo, what are you talking about? Like I've never heard you make a beat. Even, like you listen to reggae. Like what do you? I didn't even understand <laughs> what he was talking about. <laughs> then he gets on the MPC and starts, yeah, yeah. just with this mean face yeah. and starts creating this wild patterns. And you're like, what? Is, what are you thinking? Yeah, man. That, that's but it was crazy. That that was how I, I developed as a yeah. producer, stealing. Um, Dub's drum thing and <laughs> and and Key's uh, ear, you know what I'm saying? Like this was yeah. really, this was really unique for me because I had never operated in music and collaborations before, 
and I had so much fun. Like, like this period of my life, looking back, is probably the most fun that I think I had. You know what I'm saying? Just me and my brothers and my sisters, and we just on this innocent climb up this mountain. You know, yeah. and we don't know where where it's going to end up, but we know the feeling that we want to feel together. <laughs> right, right, right. So let, let's go, like, let's go there. Let's go, like, I'm trying to even figure out, like, I can't even remember. As I try to think about how I even met this clown, like, I can't, <laughs> oh, I you can't tell us. remember. It, was, it, was, it started with me. Did it? It, 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 started, it started with me. It started with Dre. Right, it started with me. So, so what happened when, um, when I moved, when I moved, I got, I got sent to DC on orders when I was in the Marines. So right. in DC, and while I'm there, I'm, you know, trying to figure my way yeah. in to just people were just knowing who I was, man. You know, I wanted, um, I wanted to be a rapper. I wanted, I was an artist, so I just wanted to do my thing, whatever that was. And I met a guy, and the cat was like, "Yo." You got what it takes to go to the next level and I can get you there and you know I'm connected, et cetera, et cetera. And we began to do the work, you know what I'm saying, and build a relationship. And he had me in the studio and he pretty much was like kind of producing me in a sense. You know what I'm saying? He'd be in my studio sessions, he'd be encouraging. He paid for, you know what I'm saying, those sessions. However he did it, he would pick me up and I learned a lot. And I learned and I was so confident in both myself and you know what he was explaining to me in the relationship we had that, you know what I'm saying, I want to introduce him to my friends. <laughs> and then I brought Shaq in. And this is where it started. You didn't just so, bring, you so, called, so, he called he on so, spring break. No, 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 this, is, this is real. I mean, listen, you're talking about a kid that came from nothing, right? And now I got this cat that believes, seemingly believes in my talent and ability and is telling me that that talent and ability is worth X amount of dollars, right? And, mm -hmm. and share with me and share with me a strategy and a vision that he has to get it. And in my young mind, I'm immature, I was 21 at the time, 22. It all sounds great, man. It sounds like this guy knows Santa Claus directly, like Santa Claus. <laughs> and you are absolutely right. Because the industry back then, it was he a, did. you couldn't get to the right. industry. Like it was like a talk a about site. it, child. I never saw my name on a right. tape, on a CD, nothing. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Dre came came home, played me some music. I was like, yo, this is you rapping? Like, how do you get your <laughs> voice <laughs> on a CD? No, hold on. That's I, Dre called. No, I'm talking about before that. Before that, he, he let me hear some music. And I was just like, okay. And then, then he called. Yeah, then he called. Yeah, let, let's talk about the call. Let's talk so, about the call. So, so when I called, I was excited, man. I called these cats, and I was like, yo, oh, man, I'm about to go cop me some whips. I mean, I was, a, I was just a little, little kid. I mean, from Brooklyn, <sighs> like... Like and, and you, let me tell you the cars I was looking at. I was looking at like BMW threes. <laughs> Beamer, like, right? You had the Beamer catalog. No, like, like, no, 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 no. I had the catalog, but listen, I had the catalog. I didn't even have a driver's license, bro. I was just like, I just wanted stuff that so, so I thought would make me cool, man. And the car was one of them, right? I had our last year in college, right? So our last year in college, we all over the place. We 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 Atlanta, we in DC, we in Virginia, we all over the place. So Dre calls us, and Dre's like, yo, y'all got to get down here. Yo, I'm about to buy this whip. This He's sending us pictures. So we yes. like, maybe we should drop out. Like, we said, you know, the hell is school. Yo, Dre's about to get this this things, this crib. He pictures. Everybody, yo, we hype. We're like, yo, let's gas up the car go down to D.C. So we get down to D.C. Cool. Cool. Dre. <laughs> we get to D.C. I don't even know if I should tell the pancakes first, but <laughs> oh, and Dre was married too. That was crazy. I, <laughs> I was, I was, I was a twenty-one-year-old married marine. Please paint the picture. Go ahead, Doug. <laughs> so we get to his crib. He has Ben's books all over the table. He has all over the place. What we like, yo, Dre got it popping. So we like, yo, where's the music? 
Like, you know, yo, he's hype, yo, the single, blah, 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 blah. We like, all right, let's hear the music. So he had a little studio room, had a whole setup and everything. So we go in the studio room and this man presses play. <laughs> the worst I've ever heard. <laughs> it wasn't the worst ever, man. <laughs> it wasn't the worst ever, but when you try to not laugh, <laughs> now the, the scene was crazy because we in this little room and we got there like like two, three in the morning. We was starving. We stopped at McDonald's and got like eight value meals. I was so, so excited good. to see them too. Oh my yo, god. And then, I, I, I and then this dude said, yo. My man coming tomorrow, he want to hear y'all. So we like, all right, we got songs on, you know, stuff we recorded in the, in the little thing at school. He like, nah, he want to hear something, something real right here to, to my beats. And me and Dennis <laughs> looking at each other like, what you saying? Like, you want us to rap right now? Like, he's like, yo, y'all got to do it. And he made us record verses at like three in the morning so we could play it for his man the next day. And we did it. That's how you know we was just about it, man. We was like, whatever it takes. We done drove. Right. Yeah, right. man. Yeah. Right. I was a I was a genius back then. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. <laughs> nah, I mean it was. It was. <laughs> and I ain't gonna lie. Like the room was yeah. little, you play yeah. you playing the music. We all like that sounds, yo. That sounds like Barry Gordy to me. <laughs> <laughs> but in my mind, I'm thinking, yo, this is What's what they happening? want. This yeah. is, if this is if this is what they tell Andre to do. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking get, like in the, in the Mason like, Beth vein. I'm like, all right, he's about to be the next Mace. All right. Just, 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 just this is what he just said. They got there at two o'clock in the morning, and I got them niggas recording by three so I can go and play that shit for my man the next day. I mean, people would kill for that today for me to do that. They would, uh, my God. The next day, I think that's when he brought TK. That's when we met TK. Yeah. 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 yeah Cause how was there? How, how was, um, I was there. <laughs> yeah. Bobby yeah. Boy, Bobby Boy, T TK by. Yeah. And what a voice on her. <laughs> man. And he, oh, yo, always made you sing. And you hit that, you hit that Mary joint, I think, back then. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it was Coco Brown. Was it Coco? Nah. You see that, that line from the uh, Mary R. Kelly joint. Go ahead, go ahead, hit that joint. I waited all my life. Go ahead, hit that joint. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I've waited all my life, boy, for you to come along. That's all y'all getting. Uh, <laughs> oh, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, yo. She, she was so dope. I had to feature her on my album, son. I had to have that voice on my album. Nah, that was, man, we was blown away. We was blown away. We I was, was like, oh. we and were... honestly, him bringing you gave him some validity. We was like, oh, all right. Yeah, that, that's for sure. We, what, what you say? Yeah, what, what we got to do? Yeah. And so we had these niggas doing God knows what because fired <laughs> me. You know what I'm saying? Got, so he, he told me, he was like, yo, listen, bro, I'm going to need $2,000 from you so I can close this deal at Interscope. My girl um, Tracy Waples, and then I would know Tracy Waples later on in life. Got to close this deal. I need two grand, and I'm gonna need your cell phone if you can call me. Remember, this is back in the cellular one days, so your cell bill would be like thirteen hundred dollars if you made like five calls on it. Right, <laughs> with Roman. Yo, this cat ran up the bill on me, took my bread, and was like, "And hey, what?" And I was a kid, you know what I'm saying? Like this man, like probably was in his, in his mid thirties at that time, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he, he took my friends and went on without me. And I began to learn my first lesson in the music business. Yeah. Okay? yeah. What was, is a, was, a, was a great, was a great first lesson to have, especially yeah. at that point. Well, you know, looking back in my career, like those, those moments were teachable moments for me. I yeah. never forgot those. Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely was. Like, I was super disconnected from that whole, you know. I yeah, you got, the less, you got the less uh, beaten key. Yeah, so, like, I, 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 I was so. <laughs> you and Lord Digger. Like, literally, it was, like, because I was still, like, with my man Danny. And, like, you know, as, as young guru started gaining steam, like, I was trying to ride that wave. Like, it's so funny because I think that glory beat. 
that uh, Sha was talking about, like, I remember one morning, like, I was in my dorm room, and Guru called me. He's like, yo, Sauce Money wants the beat. And he put Sauce Money on the phone, and he was like, yo, mm. can I have that beat? I was like, what? Of course <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yo, I'll give you eight for it. And like, this is so crazy because I had no idea what eight meant. Was it eight dollars? <laughs> eight hundred? But then Guru, I was like, he got back on the phone. I was like, what did he mean by eight? He was like, yo, eight G's. I was like, what? <laughs> All right. Yeah. I was, like, yeah. Yo, I was my man. And I was just, you know, Dre, me and Dre used to, you know, he used to come by the, um, the dorm and, you know, used to go hang out. But like at that point, it was just with friendship. Like I wasn't even really going hard with music. Me and Dre did like a couple songs together, right? But that was about it. So like we didn't really catch up until like more so after I graduated and I moved to Jersey. Mm -hmm. so Not at all. Mm -hmm. And that and that was the birth of the narcotics, <laughs> right? Because during this time, Dub and Dub Shaw and and TK. They were off doing Bob Harmon shit. I was on my lone wolf shit doing crazy Dre Night shenanigans. And Key was also a lone wolf, but you know, not as big personality as me. And he and I would link up and and we would be forming our bond. And <clears throat> so the um, you know, since I'm a lone wolf. The guys got together and decided to start a production company where we'd be in house, right? Mm -hmm. And very reluctantly, they weren't sure if they wanted to include me in this venture because of, <laughs> Whatever. Because of my very unpredictable nature. Right? <laughs> of, of, hey, I'm here today, I'm gone tonight. You know, <laughs> there's a lot to deal with when you got a cat like me at that stage of my life around. So I, I knew that. I knew that, and and I wanted to prove to them that they could count on me because I, I was always inspired by them, always, and I always loved them. And I and I had this fantasy of um of me and my friends being together and doing something really special. And I had promised myself before I had gone into it that whatever role that I had, I would accept, but that I would exceed it. I always had plans on blowing that role out the water. And I was the weaker of the three of us as a producer at this point, not as overall production, but as far as beat making, right? I was definitely behind both Dub and Keith. So I would add instrumentation yeah. onto the majority of their songs to just look to give it more depth. Mm -hmm. you, know? you gave it more than just depth. You changed the complexion yes, of you, the music. Right. <laughs> you put all them colors yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, you're a composer, yeah. Dre. You're a bag on genius. And, yeah. and, 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 I, and I felt that made, it, that, that made it really unique because now we have these cinematic type of you know hip hop records, right? In, in my mind, I always wanted to just paint a vivid picture and just tell a story and then just do it better than everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like that was. Don't, that was don't take that lightly. We we almost got laughed out of baseline before, you know, you started adding stuff. Guru was like, these samples are dope, but there's nothing to it. Like y'all need more. And we was like, more? Into uh, Dre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, like during the first, like, you know, uh, I guess beat listening sessions with uh, Guru, like, I, I remember we played the um, the 15 Cents record. And then what, what was the other record? It was another record. Was so something Dr Little Kim. Little Kim wanted that one. I yeah, think. yeah. Two, it was like a Little Kim record. And yeah. it's so crazy because, like, we had just got back from New York City. Me and Doug was in the studio with Guru. And, like, I, we just got back. Doug dropped me off in Jersey and was headed back to Delaware. And Guru called me. He was like, "Yo, Jay just walked in the, in the studio, and he's like, yo, he want this beat to to not the fifteen cents, but the other one. Time to go home. Oh, time to go home. Yeah. He's like, yo, we need to track. Yo, can you come back and track out the studio? This nigga Dub made a U turn. Like we literally had just left New York. He just dropped me off. I'm three hours. He like three and a half, three three hours and forty five minutes. Drove back." Got the fucking equipment and went back to baseline. This is all I don't know what I time remember it this. was. We I, remember, I, remember it out. I remember this. And then I don't think we left baseline until the morning, yo. 
Yeah, I wasn't yeah. there. I, re I remember this. I remember this happening. It was it was long weekends back then. Like they don't do it like how they used to do it. Like it was like lock you in the in the studio and don't come out until you yeah. know it's done. That you know them days. Uh, you know they don't they they go in, but they you know it's not as intense. I mean, of course, it took us. They 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 have more uh, less things that they can have to worry about when it comes to recording with we had reels you know <laughs> so it took longer of course you know so we did have an excuse in regards to we, we, we're the last of the real babies yeah we were the real babies you know but and y'all have i mean you know let the people you know y'all have produced from Nicki Minaj from Drake, uh, Frank Ocean. Tell the people like I want. This is your flower moment. Like I, that's what I. That's what I'm here for. I want you guys from the stuff that you guys have done individually, collectively. Narcotics, Dre Knight, you know, Key Dub Dub Sway. He a pro retired producer. I'm going to get him to do me a. He's going to do one one day. There is no such thing as a retired producer. I know. That's what I'm trying to tell him. Get There's out of only, here. Only two types of producers. You got active and inactive. Right. Time and retired. You're not retired, Dub. You're his, not. His last, like, his last credit was with me and Stro. Um, shout to Astro now, Stro. Astro, the little oh yeah. no, now he's Stro. Astro, Astro was a young boy that was on what was the voice? What was he on? What was it? The, um, X, Factor. the X Factor, yes, they did the young boy that was Astro. He was yeah, Astro, yeah. now he's Stro. A quick, a quick thing on that, right? To again, to, to Dub's genius, right? So, when when um, so the way the Astro thing comes about is Astro's mom went to school with Sean Key. But he was away on a snowboarding vacation. I, I never understood why he enjoyed this thing, but he did it every winter, right? So <laughs> he goes away and in comes this 10 year old kid to come see me um, named Astro, Brian Bradley, right? And, you know, he begins rapping to me. And this kid can rap. I mean, he's putting words together like you couldn't believe. And I said to him, I said, you know, kid, it's, it's great to understand how to rap, but it's even better to be able to make songs. And I said, songs have a theme. I said, let's talk about something that you like. I said, uh, what kind of sneakers do you like? Do you like the Jordans? And I, he said, no, I don't like the Jordans. I said, do you like the LeBrons? He said, no, I don't like the LeBrons. I said, well, what do you like? He said, Converse's. I said, well, I want you to make the record about your love for Converse sneakers, right? And he did it. And, and wrote this record about his love for Converse sneakers. And it was amazing. And I was captivated by this child that could just make these songs and stick to the theme and, and be in character and everything else. And I knew that he was special. And so when I when I told the boys about it, Dub took an immediate like liking to him, like, like a second son. And Dub began to like do these talent show-ish type of uh things with him on stage. And one of them was a skit where he would, we made a song, Stop Looking At My Moms. Me and Dub was sitting in the house, in my house, in my mother's house. And we're talking about different things that the kid could actually talk about because I mean, what can you rap about as a 10 year old, right? So <laughs> this, this was an actual thing. He used to take real offense to people, men trying to holler at his moms, right? And his moms is young. so. You know, Dub was like, yo, we just call stuff looking at my mom's. And I was like, that's so corny. And it worked. And then Dub came up with this whole skit where when he performed this record, he would pick somebody out of the crowd, right? And then he would accuse them of trying to talk to his moms. And then he would perform the record at them. And this went on for months from mm. different cities and everything else, right? And Dub was pretty much spearheading this and, and like choreographing it. And so when, um, and also another thing about Astro's development is that we, we always made sure to keep Astro confident, right? We always made sure that he knew that he was better than his peer group, right? And so he took that confidence and it became a part of him. So when, when you listen to him speak to 
who he thought his competition was as a 14 year old. He talks about Kanye West and Jay Z, and that's not him being pie in the sky. That was his truth. That was what he believed because of his confidence. And then when he went out, he performed the same exact routine that Dub had set up in my mother's dining room that I thought was the cheesiest thing ever. <laughs> and, and if you go back and watch that today, it's fucking brilliant, right? To this day, he is the first and last hip hop artist on X Factor. And it came from that audition. You can mm -hmm. say whatever you want to say, right? Mm -hmm. But if you listen to that audience and their reaction to both that record and that skit, it hasn't been anything like that since. Mm -hmm. Wow. He did it with Simon. Wow. Simon from X Factor. He made <laughs> Simon looking at his mom. Kid, kid, kids from Brooklyn. And yeah. Astro and Astro had the awareness and, and, and the balls to go out and execute with no fear. Like, mm -hmm. like let's 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 remember, right? He's a child, yeah. he's a 14 year old, right? He's in front of maybe 10,000 people, you know what I'm saying? And he's pulling this off with sheer confidence and perfect execution. Mm -hmm. He didn't stutter, he didn't stammer, mm -hmm. his, his movement was fluid. Mm -hmm. That kid was prepared. Yeah. You know and, yeah, and and that has and that has everything to do with the folks that you're talking to in this in this chat room. That's right. That's right. You know, you know and, it was a, it was a thin line between like you know this this kid is, you know, preteen. I mean, when we got him, he was what nine. Like yeah. sessions with him were yeah. very sensitive. You know, like yeah. right, right, right. A little very bit sensitive. of give and take, and okay, you know, you're still a child, but like I know what his aspirations were. He wants to. He wanted to be the best rapper alive. Wanted to be great. Like you know, yeah. we did the song called uh, "Where My Grammy At." Like I literally, you know, had to. You know, I don't know. I was a bad guy that day. Like I had to push it. Like yo, I don't feel this, Astro. And like he was, and it was crazy because he was only 13 or 14 years old. So like that type of push could, you know, make a kid cry. Mm -hmm. But that just gave him fuel to like just go crazy on this record. He was just mm -hmm. that talented. A Astro, mm -hmm. Astro, Astro got a lion's heart. He's a warrior. He's a warrior as a kid. The kid mm -hmm. ain't never. And never had no no fear in him. He, he was mm -hmm. never shy. He was never nervous. You know put him on my album. Put him on mixtape. Put him on stage at SOBs. Absolutely. I'm with Nas. So shout out to. Yeah, yeah. I think you he's said on what job? He signed with Nas. So shout okay, out. he's with Nas now. He's, he's, yeah, a, he's a grown ass man. Now. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to Astro, you know, uh, and and hopefully, you know, he could be able to um, give you guys the flowers that you guys deserve for, you know, putting him in that mind space and really just, nope. you know, preparing him for what he has done. And, you know, it, it just feels good. I know, you know, like I said, from us coming from, you know, from back there, from that story, from us now here and uh you know that's why i kind of just started the stars performing arts and working with the youth and you know educating them on the you know the life lessons that i've learned the good and the bad and just you know really preparing them for this lifestyle because it's not a, a career it's not a jump in jump out this is a lifestyle you know um that you have to have um and you have to be dedicated to it and like you said, have that tough skin and all those different things that come with it. Um, you know, that's where I'm at now. So I definitely can, you know, understand and, and really know how it should feel to see other people that you've helped along the way. Like I said, I've been doing it behind the scenes, just like how you guys have been behind the scenes doing it. And now I'm just like, you know, let me put let me put myself out there in regards to this is what I'm doing. This is what I've been doing. You know, um, I've did it because it was a passion and I just stepped in and did it. But I want the people to know, because when I go to certain people that I want to be able to help, they're like, well, what have you done? And I'm just like, well, I've done this, that, the third, but don't necessarily have, you know, other than just what I've said, you know, not necessarily like footage and things of that nature, um, just stories, you know, but I'm, you know, want to definitely, um, you know, just talk about, you know, moving forward with, um, 
you know, Dub's going to do a, a, another track. And, um, you know, <laughs> Shy has a new book out. Um, real quick, Shy, tell them about your book. Tell them where they can find it at so that you can, you know, send the people to you so they can learn more about, you know, the yeah. book. It's called Strong Words for the Week. It's um, a compilation of the, the bar talk that you that you showed earlier. It's just some some spoken word pieces, uh, you know, rhythmic, uplifting, uh, just verses, complete with some anecdotes and action items at the end. Um, you're supposed to like read one, read each one every week, but people have just been reading the whole thing and and taking what they take from it. So I'm just very fortunate. You can get it on Amazon. Um, type in Strong Words for the Week. It's on my Instagram page at Shot Stimuli. Um, yeah, well, it's moving, so I'm, I'm just grateful. There you it's go. What it looks like, you know what I'm saying? There yes, you go. Sir. Yes, I gotta sir. get mine. I gotta get you <laughs> and Tracy's. I had Tracy yeah. Lee on the show last week. I gotta get his uh, book too. Yeah, shout out to Tracy. Tracy Lee. Shout out to Tracy. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It was a great interview. I'm so mad. Universal. I could just squeeze them, man. They tried. They they took the um the the show off because, of course, I played the theme, and you know they. I mean, sooner. I didn't even yeah. finish the show. The mamas, they took it off sooner before I could even finish the show. I'm like, come yeah. on, Universal. Like, it was a good show, man. I'm, I'm trying to. Um, actually, my, I left my laptop in New York. I'm going up Sunday to pick that back up. But um, and I can put it on YouTube, you know, and so mm. that's where I'm at with that. But it was a great show. But uh, you know, so I'm like, God, yeah, they do way too much. I tell you, this industry. I'm like, I was just telling somebody, I'm like, look, we create our own stars. Like we, we're stars. You are a star just because you're not in that line. Like you're still a star. You always will be a star. It's all about what you do with that. You know, you can't take it away from you. You know. Uh, I could never believe that uh, Dre would leave LA and go to Atlanta. I was like, "What? Where did, where did that? I mean, I'm He's sorry, not my, not 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 Atlanta, Miami. I'm thinking of you, Sha. Um, in Miami, where he now has the Gym Factory. And are you are you partnered with Jimmy Cozier? Yeah, well, um, well, Jimmy Jimmy is serving in a real in a real unique role. He's serving okay. as, our, as our chief cultural officer. Okay, and if if y'all don't know, look up Jimmy Cozier, Google him, please. Thank you very Jimmy, much. He's been a dear friend of mine a very long time, and um, it's kind I of a too. <laughs> right. So we all went to junior high school together. Dub, me, Shop, and Jimmy Cozier. He's two years older. So um, what I did was I built the I built the ecosystem, right? So as a producer, producers work in studios. So I had the studio. So that's one business. And as a producer, I had the production company other businesses and then i structured a deal to do a label deal for my record company i did that and then i did a live stream deal and then i started a tv channel on roku tv then i did a deal for gem factory publishing so i created in essence a scaled down version of a major label right and then used the same personnel that i had been working with over the last 20 years as a producer to fill these roles right that i would need to move forward and then I begin to uh, I put my brain trust in. I put a very a, a team of really intelligent people together along with me as a visionary. And then I acquired a bunch of artists that also brought a bunch more talent, right? And between the songwriters, engineers, and everybody I already had as a producer, I had a full army uh, platoon to go from discovery to release. And so I just. I just parted up and now I'm closing on a new building downtown Miami where we'll house our new headquarters. And I'm yes. really excited about it. I love it. And like I never thought that I, I I had I had in my imagination what this would look like, but I tell you, man, like I, I, I never thought it would look like this. Yeah. It's a long way from fifty dollar beats. <laughs> a long way from fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> man, man, man! I tell you, I don't know what happened to Key. Uh, you know, but um, we've, been saying, we've been saying that for thirty years. I know <laughs> hey, exactly what happened to Key. What happened to Key? I mean, just out of the blue, he just, just disappears. Like what happened to Key? <laughs> he still oh. to this day. Oh my gosh! Yeah, man, I'm looking at people. 
Huh? He got feet. He got feet okay. Throat. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Got you. Got you. You know, I got to get home to my grandson and I got to start cooking for the grand, my daughter for a graduation. Where can the people find you guys individually so we can get up out of here and, um, you know, y'all can do y'all thing. Dub, Dub doesn't want to be found. I know. <laughs> Not yet. I know. Dub, Not, yet. <laughs> Not yet. I've always played the background. I, I like my role in the back. Behind the we, we got some things in motion, though. He's going to have to yes, come out. Yeah, yeah, we got, yeah, we got some excitement. We got to, Dub. We uh, got to. Uh, Property of God, the hat that Sean has on, that's another company I'm working with. Uh, another company, Star Baked Goods, that's a company that has infused drinks that we're doing in New York, and then uh, we're working on something real big, me and Shah and Ray, that's huge. Yeah, I, want, I want in. I want in. Are you in? <laughs> you already in. It's the, it's, 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 the next, it's the next chapter for us. You know? That's right. That's right. Let's, I'm, I'm let's... Man, listen. Because you know, we ain't get to tell our story. Can, can you even imagine if we had Instagram when we had those weekends uh, in Jersey? Uh, forget about it. If we had any type uh, of social media to promote the madness we were I doing know. and creating. Oh and we just wanted God. to get better. That's it. We just That's like, yo, we just want to get better. That's it. That's it. Black oh yeah, black powder. Yeah. That we started uh kind of kind of from key. She <laughs> <laughs> right. created black powder yeah. without knowing it. <laughs> uh, cool. black cool. on the slopes. Black powder. Uh, oh my gosh, on the high desert. The band the, the band is back together. And yes. We, we have some new things coming, man. And yo, know, I'm I, so thrilled. I so, love it. I'm so excited to have my guys, but you're going to see them in a different light, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's different there's different parts of these guys that haven't been seen yet, and it's about to be on. That's it. That's I, it. I get a chance to be the guy. Like, see, told you so. My friends. Are oh, Lord, here we go. <laughs> you come in and do his thing, Lord. I'm mercy. Sean, right. where can they find you at? Uh. At Shah Stimuli, S H A S T I M U L I. My Twitter got hacked. I'm trying to get it back, but um, I'm on IG. <laughs> it's IG. That's yeah. how you know you're popping. That's, that's Man, how you know listen. you're popping when your Twitter gets hacked. I've never been hacked by anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Dre, where can the people find you at? They can find me on Instagram at Dre Knight. It's just how my name is spelled D R E K N I G H T. All right, y'all, man. I love y'all from the bottom of my heart. Yo, we got work to do. Let's do it. We 25 plus in, yeah. and uh, let's get uh, it in. Can you believe DJ? Where did, where did the time go? Yeah, right. Wait, wait DJ got the kid? DJ got a kid and Treasure got a kid, yes. Holy shit, you're a grandmother. Up to a boy and a girl. God, what? What day is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. How old yes, is DJ? Right. DJ's DJ be 25 this year. So yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're old. I love you guys. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate you so much. I'll Amazing. call you. Love y'all. Shout out Black. <laughs> <I keep. All laughs> I didn't even get to say.